we will get that next generation here in person to be connected, that we can uplift and then encourage them. Whatever the world is trying to take away, we can get them back here to build a relationship with the Lord. No matter what, don't let go. Don't give up. So I'm going to come out of Psalms 145 and with verse 4 and 7. Don't give up, saints. Don't give up, parents. Don't give up, grandparents, aunts, uncles. Please don't give up on our children. They need us more than they ever realize. Just like we know we needed God more than we ever realized. And we too were young. We too were young. Psalms 145, verse 4 to 7. And I'm coming from the New King James Version. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous work. Men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts, and I will declare your generate your gener your greatness. Sorry. They shall utter the memory of your great goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. I have read Psalms 147, verse 4 to 5, and the words of the Lord has been spoken. And we say, Amen. amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father. Thank you for this day. Praise your holy name. God, even when we're weak, you are strong. In all situations, we are, you are our strength and our salvation. So even when we feel lost, alone, confused, frustrated, we will choose to trust you, Lord. I will know that you will never fail us. I know you'll always be with us. I choose to boldly say, you are my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. I will pray for all saved and unsaved. I pray for all those to renewing of our minds, to focus more on you, Lord, and not on our problems or our circumstances. I pray for the healing of your people and comfort to those who have lost loved ones. There is no prayer too small for you, Lord. We have a blessed assurance to praise our Savior all day long. This I do pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
to God be the glory. Hallelujah. 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 You may have felt a little sick in your body, but God strengthened you, didn't he? And this is a day that the Lord has made for his people to gather in his house to remember and to reflect on the goodness of God. Amen. 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 And I just thank God. I just thank God for keeping me. I thank God that I'm alive this day. I thank God for his mercy. I thank God for his grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to the name of the Lord. For he is good. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. God, you are so worthy. You are so awesome. And I thank you for your grace and for your mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The songwriter says, your grace and mercy, your grace and mercy brought me through. I am living this moment because of you. And I want to thank you and praise you too for your grace and mercy brought me through. Hallelujah. A lot of people think that it's because they're eating well and they're exercising. All those things are good. But it's because of God's grace and his mercies. While we're here today, this moment in his house. Hallelujah. And I just thank God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to give the announcement. But I just feel in my spirit to just give God thanks for this day and to thank him for his grace and for his mercies. For God is good. As the young people say, God is good, y'all. Am I saying it right? Can I pronounce that right? God is good, y'all. He is good. Yes, he is. Praise God. God is good. Hallelujah. Praise God. Our meeting is upon us. It begins this Thursday. Praise God. Thursday night, as you know, will be at Abundant Life in Freehold, New Jersey. Likewise, Friday the 9th, will be at First Haitian Church of God in Trenton, New Jersey. Both nights are at 7 p.m. Amen. Amen. Amen? And then we have, it concludes on Sunday at 6 p.m. at the War Memorial in Trenton, New Jersey. So if you're not able to make the Thursday or the Friday night, maybe because of work schedule or different things. I encourage you though to attend, but on Sunday evening, it will be at 6 p.m. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. We will have our worship time here in the morning as usual, and then at 6 p.m. we head to the War Memorial in Trenton, New Jersey. So I encourage you to please See if you can attend one of those nights. Amen? Amen. So because of all that, we will not be having Bible studies on Wednesday. Amen? Amen. We not only care about your spirituality, but we care about your natural life as well. So on Wednesday, we will not have Bible studies. Amen? Amen. So Thursday, Friday, and Sunday, will be our camp meeting. And of course, we have our trip to the Museum of the Bible. We Amen. depart here at 8 a.m. Amen? Amen? Amen. We've been planning this trip for a little while now, so we can't back out. Amen? Amen. 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 
Amen. But those of you who will not be going on the trip, they will be the orphans run for hope by the Burlington Waterfront. Amen? Amen. Yes. Amen. Go ahead and support. If you can't run, you can walk. But we're all asked to participate in some way, shape, or form. You can donate if you have the ability to do so. Amen. 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 Those are the announcements that I have in your airing for now. Mark your calendars. Speaking of calendars, the new calendars are out for the month of June. Grab one on your way out at the end of service today. Amen? Amen. 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 Put them on your refrigerator so you can be reminded of what's coming up here at our local church as well as the state. Amen? Amen, amen. Can we all stand? It's, we have come to part of the service where we are going to partake of the body and the blood of Christ. Amen. amen. Our hearts should have already been prepared to meet the presence of the Lord here. But now we're going to prepare ourselves to receive of the body and the blood of Christ. Praise God. of the Lord was broken. He shed his blood for me and for you. He died for us while we were yet sinners. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He is worthy.
Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. So the Lord's Supper, as it was read in verse 27 through to 30, should not be taken lightly. It's a very serious thing. See, God paid the ultimate price for us. He gave his life. And that's not a game. That's something that we should take seriously. That's why the scripture encourages us not to take it lightly. Praise God. So I encourage you. If you do not have a relationship with the Lord, I advise you not to eat from the Lord's table. The Word of God also encourages us to examine ourselves. So I'll give you this moment to examine yourselves. We examine ourselves. And so we thank you for this moment, Lord. 
And as we eat of your body, and then as we drink of your blood, hallelujah, we continue to give you praise. We continue to give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as you are served the Lord's Supper, hallelujah, hallelujah, we ask you to take Hallelujah. And to wait for us so we can eat together. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is a solemn moment. Hallelujah. Praise God.
Hallelujah. The songwriter says that there is a fountain filled with blood flowing from Emmanuel's vein, and sinners plunge beneath the flood. Hallelujah. Lose all their guilt and stain. Hallelujah. This morning, how many of us still believe that the blood still works? Hallelujah. How many of us believe that the blood of Jesus still heals? Hallelujah. The precious blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. That blood that flows to the highest mountain and to the lowest valley. It has not lost its power. Hallelujah, God. And this morning, whatever you need from God, hallelujah, he is able to supply this morning. If you will just lift your hands up and praise him. If you will open your mouth this morning and give him a worship. If you can just say hallelujah or thank you, Jesus. If you can just bless him in this house this morning. He woke you up this morning in your right mind. He gave you strength to be standing here today. He provided food on your table. Some of us didn't eat this morning not because we didn't have it, just because we didn't want to. Hallelujah this morning. We went to bed last night and we were next door. We slept the sleep of death. We didn't know what was happening when we closed our eyes and we drifted off. Hallelujah. But yet still, God kept you. He woke you up this morning. Even the alarm clock didn't go off. God woke you up. Hallelujah this morning. You could get off the bed. Hallelujah. You could brush your teeth. You could take care of yourself. You didn't need any help this morning. And can we give God a praise for that? Your limbs were intact. Hallelujah. You opened your blinded eyes. Hallelujah. Can we just bless the Lord for that this morning? If he's worthy of anything else, even that he's worthy of, of the praise. Because we have breath in our lungs today. Hallelujah. If he's worthy of anything else, he's worthy of the praise. Because we can lift up these hands this morning. We can simply open our mouth this morning. And when we open this mouth of ours, sound come out. Sound that is understandable. Words that are formed this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor Loma, you just started a fire in here with a praise. And I feel like there's a worship in this house this morning. Listen, I know we got a word to get to. I know we got to receive of the Lord and praise Him with our offering. But I want to take this time out in this moment right now. That if you would just spend a little time. You know when the Eagles are playing or when the 76ers or when we have our favorite show or sports team. Or we see our favorite thing going on on TV. We got to shout. We got something to say. But today we are standing in the presence of royalty. We are standing in the presence of the Almighty God. And we have to have something to say to Him. Even to say thank you Jesus. Even just to say hallelujah. Which is the highest praise. Even to say Lord I love you this day. Oh, hallelujah. God I bless you. Lord I magnify your name. Lord there is none beside you God. Lord you are a healer. Thank you for keeping me. God, when I didn't think I was worth it. Oh God, you did not give up on me. And God, I want to bless you today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because you are worthy today. God, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. From the rising of the sun, Psalm 113 says, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, he is worthy to be praised. Oh, glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We serve a mighty God and a wonderful God because he is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, we serve a marvelous God. He is the great physician. He is our provider. He is the El Shaddai. He is the El Elyon. Hallelujah. He is the most high God. Oh, can we just bless him in the house today? Can we bless him today? 
Oh, the presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is in this place. And we just want to lift up the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We want to lift up the Most High God. Listen, uh, if our president walked in here today, a lot of us would be excited. If a celebrity walked in here today, a lot of us would be all struck. Hallelujah. But we are in the presence of greatness. And the Bible says that in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy at his right hand. There are pleasures forevermore. Oh, what fellowship divine, the songwriter says. I am his and he is mine. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Oh, we bless the name of Jesus today because he is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be glorified. You're worthy to be magnified, God. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be lifted up. Hallelujah, God. There is none beside you. You are the everlasting God. You are the King of Kings. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship your name today. Glory be to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Glory be to the Most High God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, I thank you today. I thank you. I thank you today. I thank you. I thank you today, God. I thank you. Hallelujah. Has your back ever been against the wall? Have you ever kept to the point where you don't know what else to do? But God showed up. He made a way out of no way. Have you ever tried to call on some friends and some family? And they couldn't hear you or they were too busy with their own thing. And you cried, oh Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. And he just showed up. He's a keeper in school. He's a keeper at work. He's a keeper in your car. He's a keeper on the highway. He's a keeper in the sick room. He's a keeper when things are down. That is the God we serve. Hallelujah. And we bless him today because he is worthy. Hallelujah, God. He is worthy to be praised. Oh, we serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. We serve a risen Savior. Hallelujah. Can we just clap our hands for him today? Can we just applaud him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. He is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. When the music fades, when there is no one standing here like myself or a worship leader like Pastor Loma, when we don't have a congregation like this and nobody is sitting on your row or in front of you or behind you, sometimes we're just sitting in the quietness of our homes, the quietness of our cars, the quietness of our bedroom or our living room, the quietness of us taking a walk. It's just us and God. And I'm telling you, right now we have support with praise because we have a congregational praise and other folks are praising in this house. But there are times when it's just you that needs to echo something to God. He needs to hear your voice and your audible. He needs to hear how you sound. He needs to hear what's coming from the inside and the cry that you have. Hallelujah. And so I want us to take the next few minutes because Moses said, if you don't go with us, we don't want to go to show you how important the presence of the Lord is. Glory to the name of Jesus. And we could come here Sunday after Sunday. We could come here week, Wednesday after Wednesday, or every second and fourth Friday. And if the presence of the Lord is not here, we're just going through a drill or a routine. But at the end of the day, we want to make sure that his presence is here and that we enjoy it. Amen. Hallelujah. And not only enjoy, but that we acknowledge his presence. Yes. Glory to the name Praise of Jesus. Amen. Can we just lift up a praise to the Lord one more time? 
have breath in your body today, young or old, middle aged. I'm asking you this morning to open up your mouth and just tell God something. Whether it's thank you, whether it's hallelujah, whether it's Lord I love you, whether it's just to call his name and say Jesus, just say something to the almighty God today. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your body that has been broken. Thank you, God, for your life through your son, Jesus Christ, that you gave. God, we thank you. Oh, for your blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. God, we thank you today. Hallelujah. And we worship you. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. God, we bless your name today, Lord. Hallelujah. Because you're worthy. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be glorified. You're worthy to be magnified. Hallelujah. While we're worshiping this morning, we want to continue in the mode of worship. You know, we're given. I'm going to ask our usher to just prepare the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Beginning of verse 6 simply says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he pro proposes or purposes in his heart, not grudgingly nor of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have an all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Amen. Amen. God wants us to have an abundance for every good work. And I want to say to us, it's not just about us giving financially or receiving financially. But it's about us receiving the blessings through our health, through opportunities. It's about us receiving the blessings through the grace that is given unto us day after day. And we thank God. Amen. Amen. For those who want to partner with us in this ministry, you can give through our cash app. It is dollar sign Ebenezer F W C C O G. That's dollar sign Ebenezer F W C C O G. For those who are here in person, there are envelopes on your seats. You can give through that, or you may want to write a check to us. You can make it out to Ebenezer Family Worship Center, Church of God. And you can mail that to 90 Beach the Court. That's 90. B E E C H N U T Court, Lumberton, New Jersey, 08048. We can also give by Zelle, and that's through the church number at 609 283 6798. 609 283 6798. We want to give to the Lord today. It's a part of our worship. And as you know, we give our tithe. An offering is a free will. It's what the Lord had put purpose in your heart. Your tithe is what the Lord has blessed you with, and a tenth of what God has blessed you with. And so as our worship comes, just prepare your hearts to worship. Father, we give you glory today. We give you the honor and we give you the praise. There is none who is worthy like you. And as we present our offering and our tithe to you this day, we pray that it will come up as a sweet smelling fragrance 
This is our part of our worship, God. And we do not want to give just because it's necessary to give or give because we're in competition grudgingly. We want to outgive each other. But God, this day we want to give as an offering of worship in your presence that you will be glorified, that you will be exalted, Father, because you commanded it to be so. And so we thank you, Lord, for opening up the windows of heaven. We thank you for pouring out your blessings of healing and deliverance and breakthrough. We thank you, Father, for that which you are about to do in our lives. The unanswered prayers that have been prayed for, the unanswered prayers of loved ones of God, the unanswered prayers of our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Oh, God, we thank you, Father, for hearing God. And as we pour in to your kingdom, we know and believe that you're going to pour out to us in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. Our usher is going to come to receive that which you give to the Lord on today. We thank God for his goodness. We thank God for his grace. And while our usher is coming, just to add to the announcements that was given earlier this morning, that also on this Friday, second and fourth Fridays, we have had our youth night and prayer meeting. Because of our state camp meeting, we will not be having our youth night and prayer meeting. Those are canceled because we have a state event and we want to go and support that event on the state. So just to add to that, I'm excited about what is happening this week and the things that are coming down the pipeline and what God is doing. Anybody excited? I know summer is coming along and you know our young folks or young people are about to be out of school. Our young people are about to be uh, out but we just want to um, we just want to ask God to bless us today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We just want to ask God to bless us today. So today, I want you to stand with me. We're going to read from the book of John chapter 15. We're going to read from the book of John chapter 15. And we're going to read a few verses there. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The book of John chapter 15. We're going to read from verse 26 through to 27. John chapter 15. Those are the last two verses of this particular chapter. It says, But when the Helper comes, or the Holy Ghost comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. I want to read that again. And I'm going to read it this time from the message translation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> it says, when the friend I plan to send you from the Father comes, the spirit of truth issuing from the Father he will confirm everything about me. Amen. You too, from your side, must give your confirming evidence. Mm -hmm. Since you are in this with me That's right. from the start. Amen. I want to talk to us today, continuing the vein from last week. We said, who is the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. And I want to talk to us today, continuing in that vein in Pentecost why the Holy Spirit came. Father, we thank you today for your awesome power. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for the service and each and every one that's here, each and every one that's tuned in. And we pray, God, as they come, as they come, they will not leave the same way they came. They will not leave empty. But God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you, oh God, will pour into us today as you have already done. 
Father, our cup, the heart cups are turned up. And Father, it's a figurative and a, a metaphor, but we are open to receive that which you want to give to us. So we pray that as I stand at this podium, that you will hide me behind the power of the Holy Spirit. Let no flesh be glorified. Oh God, let no intelligence, oh, oh God, be glorified or carnality be glorified. But let you, God, be glorified in this house today. And we give you the honor and the praise, Father, for everything that has already said and done and everything that will be done in the name of Jesus. We thank you. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Why the Holy Spirit came. The Bible tells us in the book of John that Jesus had given his disciples what is known as an assurance or a confidence in the fact that while he was going to be absent from them in the body, he was still going to be present with them in the spirit. That's right. Amen. So while he was here, they enjoyed his company and they enjoyed the things that they did and the breaking of bread and going fishing and having to travel on the Sea of Galilee, seeing the mir very miracles that he did, seeing the things that he went through, finding out that he was going to die and he had to leave them. And the truth of the matter is that when we have people in our presence whom we love, whenever they depart from us, uh, the, Bible, the, 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 the philosopher Peters and Walters, someone said a long time ago that there is something that's sad and solemn in parting. So when people part from us, there is always a sadness that comes along with it. Yeah. It doesn't matter if they're getting a pro promotion or they're going to a new level. It doesn't matter if they're moving to start their lives. No matter how excited we are for them, there is always something that saddens us on the inside. Yeah. That's true. Amen. And so the disciples, when we read through the gospel, we find out that they were constantly asking Jesus questions about what was to come. We read last week from the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 4 through 8 where while Jesus told them what was going to happen and he was preparing their hearts, the Bible says that they came back and they asked Jesus, so what is going to be the sign of the Father? And Jesus had to set them straight. I just like Jesus' demeanor because, you know, there are times when he can be gentle as a lamb, but there are times when he was as sharp as a sword. That's right. And so he had to set them straight and he simply said to them, listen, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has put in his power, but you should stay in Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. That's right. You see, the Holy Ghost is a promise to us. The Holy Ghost is a promise out of heaven from God to us. Yeah. And so he said, when he comes, you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. Hallelujah. Anybody this afternoon is holding on to a promise and just waiting for God. Amen. Hallelujah. So the Bible says that when he comes, he is going to teach you some things. Last week we looked at the symbolism of the Holy Spirit, who he is That's right. to us. Because he is the one that connects us with God. That's right. We went back to the book of Genesis and we talked about Adam and how when that lump of clay was formed in Adam because you see Adam was created, we were born. There was one creation that God did and that was Adam. The rest of us were born. Eve was created, Amen. but the rest of us were born. Yes. Seth was born. Cain was born. Abel was born. Mm -hmm. Abraham was born. Moses was born. Uh -huh. You and I are born. Mm. Not, created. Not created. And so when God blew the breath or he imparted a part of him, he did the first mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation or he did the first resuscitation with Adam. And he and blew into him the breath of life. 
It wasn't just breath that he blew into him. That breath was the spirit of God that went into Adam. Because the Holy Spirit is a spirit of life. He brings life to us. He is known as the Ruach or the Paraclete, which is the Ruach means breath or the breath of God. And so because God is life and his spirit is alive and well, we become alive when we accept Jesus Christ. Amen. And so the Holy Spirit, when we accept him, becomes the indwelling spirit in our lives. And we become alive spiritually. We're connected to the Father. We're connected to Jesus Christ spiritually in God. Amen. So the Bible says that Jesus was constantly preparing their hearts and telling them that I must go away because if I don't go, then the comforter will not come. If I don't go, the comforter would not come. And so, a lot of times I hear people say the Holy Spirit is a force or he's, you know, strength or he's this and he's that. But I want to tell us today that the Holy Spirit is a person. He is not only the third person in the, in the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, which is called the Trinity, the three in one. But he is also the administrator, as we said last week. And most importantly, not just the administrator, but he is the executor of the will and the purpose of God. And so the Bible tells us that without the Holy Spirit in our lives, we have no communication or connection to God. You see, the person who is not a born-again believer is not connected to God. As much as that fan is blowing today or this light that we're seeing, if it, ha it can be as beautiful as it is, but if there is no power running through those lines, if there is no electricity, if there is no power in this building, it becomes dark. We don't have the use or the effectiveness of the items and the condiments and the amenities that we use. If there is no power in this building, you'll be hearing my voice but no mic because this will be, this will be powerless as beautiful an instrument it is. And it's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. He brings a power that turns our lives to a new level. He brings a power that simply causes us to love the unlovable. He brings a power that causes us to forgive others of their sin. He brings a power that causes us that we are on the brink of giving up. We have a hope that we can hold on to. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the job. The Holy Spirit the brings power. He is the one who executes the promises of God on our behalf. Yes. And that's why Paul writes in the book of Romans chapter 8, he said, listen to me, the same power that rose Jesus from the dead is inside you and I. That's because the same spirit that brought Jesus up from the dead. The same spirit that broke out of the grave. The same spirit that allowed death to have no dominion over him. is the same spirit that is living inside you and I. And the same spirit is a person. He is not a force. He is not an influencer, but it is the spirit of God himself. He is God himself. When we look at the Holy Spirit as the third person of the Trinity, we'll find out that the scripture describes him on the same level as God the Father and God the Son. He is called such names as the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God, the Spirit of Adoption, the Spirit of the Son, and the Spirit of Christ. The Holy Spirit is a person just as God the Father and Christ the Son uh -huh. are persons. Amen. 
You see, many times, one of the things that we do is that we recognize a father, we recognize a son, and we ignore the Holy Spirit. We ignore him. Last week, we talked about his symbolism. There's one other thing that I didn't mention last week, and that he is also a seal for us. The Holy Spirit is the seal of our redemption. When we look at the book of Ephesians chapter 4, the Bible tells us that we should not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom we are sealed until the day of redemption. And so because he is a person, he has emotions. Because he is a person, he also has feelings. Because he is a person, he is able to embrace us. Because he is a person, he is able to listen to us. That's why Jesus said that we are going to get a teacher. We are going to get a counselor. Listen, a whiff can't give us counseling. A whiff can't give us teaching. But it has to take a person to be able to teach us something that we can follow. And he is not it. Many times we refer to the Holy Spirit as it. But he is a him. And just as how we can physically see you and I, it's the same way that he is a person of the Godhead. We cannot physically see him, but we can feel his presence. Amen. The Bible says, when the comforter is come, whom I will send to you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father. I want you to listen to this carefully. John 15, 26. It didn't say, it will testify of me. But if you look at the scripture, it says, he will testify of me. And so the Bible tells us not to grieve the Holy Spirit by whom we're sealed. And you know what? The fact that he can be grieved tells me that he has feelings has someone ever embarrassed you before? Oh, yeah. How do you feel about that? Well, has someone ever let you down before and you feel disappointed? Oh, yeah. How do you feel about that? Mm -hmm. It shows that you are human. Mm -hmm. Someone ever hurt you before? <laughs> because we have feelings. Yes. God created us with five senses. Sight. Smell. Hearing, feeling, and taste. That's right. And so the same way that if we lose one of our senses, another sense becomes heightened. Yeah. When blind Bartimaeus lost his sight, his hearing became heightened. Yes. Yes. It's the same way. Just so that they're trying to shut him up because he couldn't see. He felt some sort of way. But I'm glad that blind Bartimaeus, while he was trying to hear, and they were trying to shut his praise down, he realized that there was one that was greater. He realized the power and the presence of Jesus. And the Bible says that instead of cowering down, the Bible says that he simply shouted the louder. He felt something. Yes. Amen. He heard something. Right and he knew that because the crowd, you see, here's what happened. Blind Bartimaeus, and we got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. yes. Because blind Bartimaeus realized that the noise that the crowd was making on this very day uh -huh. was different from the regular marketplace noise. Uh -huh. He recognized that it was different from just a conversation. He recognized that something and it's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. In order for him to fully function in our lives, uh -huh. we have to be able to give him the opportunity. For this. We have to be sensitive to his move. We have to be sensitive to when he calls us. We have to be sensitive to when he instructs us. We have to be sensitive to when he, he embraces us. Because too many people have lost the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit. 
And Paul declares that when we have lost the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit, that our conscience has been seared with a hot iron. And that's why we find that our people who are even born again believers can do some things and they see it as nothing. They can go some places and they find out that they don't find anything wrong with it. But I want to talk to us today for the few minutes I have that this same Holy Spirit, just as how our past presidents and our officials have bodyguards or they have CIA representatives that security that follows them and go, it's the same way the Holy Spirit is going with you where you go. It's the same way that he's listening to your conversations. It's the same way that he is prompting you under the anointing so that you don't go into sin. Amen, amen. Because he not only can be grieved, he not only teaches, he not only counsels, but he can also be ignored. And there are many times when we have ignored his prompting. On Friday, I was somewhere and a pastor was giving her testimony of how God gifted them with the building. And she said that while they were going north or in the opposite direction, the Holy Spirit already prompted them to go south. And they didn't see stuff as a lucrative or the, or the abundant place to be. Mm -hmm. They thought north was better. Mm -hmm. And so they kept going north. And she said every door north was shut. Mm. Wow. We can ignore him. And if we're honest today, before all our brethren in the sight of God and man in this edifice today, we have all at some point in time, not just when we were in sin and didn't know Christ, mm -hmm. but at some point in time, even now, yeah. while we're saved, has ignored the Holy Spirit promptings mm. and did our own thing. Well. Some of us weren't sure if it was him mm. that was telling us to do what he was instructing us to do. Mm. And so we thought it probably was our mind. And sometimes it's our mind. Well, but when the Holy Spirit speaks, there is a difference in his voice. Yeah. When the Holy Spirit speaks, you are going to know that it is him. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Sure. And so the Bible says that he speaks sometimes in an audible voice to us. Sometimes it's a still small voice. Yeah. When Adam heard God, it was an audible voice. When Elisha in the cave heard God, it was an audible voice. When Samuel, in the book of Samuel, the little boy Samuel the prophet, when he first heard God, he heard an audible voice and he thought it was Eli the prophet. But it was God that called him. And so I'm saying to us today that it's not just older folks that God speaks to. Amen. It's not just middle-aged folks that God speaks to, but he speaks to young children. He speaks uh, to the teenagers. He speaks uh, to the young people because the Holy Spirit uh, wants to draw you all to him. He wants to use you for his purpose. He wants to impart in you the thing that he has destined for your life. And he came not just because he wants you to be prosperous, but he came so that you can be healed. He came so that you can be delivered. He came that you can be set free. He came that you can have breakthrough. Jesus says that the spirit of the Lord is upon me to set the captives free, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, to free those who are imprisoned, to heal those who are bruised. He didn't say, I came to do that. But he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's right. Yeah. The Holy Spirit right. came not just because of Pentecost, but he came to help us as believers. Amen. He came to help us so that we are able to fulfill that which God has called us to do. The work of the Holy Spirit is 
impactful in our lives. Mm -hmm. And just as how, if we don't avail ourselves to be used by him, he will not have us to be used effectively. Yeah. It's just like a carpenter. If he doesn't have an available saw or a hammer, there is no way that he would be able to nail something in the wall. Wow. If he doesn't have an available saw, he cannot cut that two by four lumber. Yeah. And it's the same thing. If we are not available to the spirit of the living God, the way that he wants to fulfill his purpose in our lives will never be fulfilled because we're not available for him to pour into us. He comes to help us in the things that we do. Here is what John 14 verse 26 tells us. It says, in John 14 verse 26, it simply says to us, Jesus said from verse 25, These things I have spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the Comforter, which is a Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things uh -huh. and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I've said unto you. He will teach you all things and he will bring all things to your remembrance. What is he going to bring to your remembrance? How can I bring something to your remembrance that has never been there? And that's why it's important for us to study the word of God. It's important for us to spend time in the house of God. It's important for us to hear the word of God. Because when we study it, when we meditate upon the word, when we hear the word of God, then we will know that when we go before magistrates, when we get to a place where we don't, we, we are not able to remember that the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit will bring it back to our remembrance. When we get in the group of people who want to lead us in the wrong way, the book of Proverbs said, my son, if sinners entice you, consent thou not. The Bible tells us that when we get to places where temptation throws up and temptation is coming to trip us, then the Holy Spirit will make a way of escape out of the temptation. God will bring the word to our remembrance that you should not steal. He will bring the word to convict our hearts, to convict our spirit so that we can submit to him. Yes, yes. So he brings it to our remembrance. The Holy Spirit brings it back to us. The Bible tells us in the book of Timothy, Paul writing to the young pastor Timothy, he said, we should study to show ourselves approved. A workman needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. God Amen. cannot bring back what you didn't have in the first place. Amen. Wow. Amen. If you go to the bank without having an account or didn't do a deposit or your account came down to a dollar, or some accounts you have to have 20 or $5, dollars are bankers in the house, then if you can't write a check for $1,000, because when you go to the bank, the check will bounce, because you do not have enough money in the bank in order to offset or to catch a check. Am I correct? Amen. And so it is with the Holy Spirit in order for the word to become effective in our lives, in order for the word to work effectively in our circumstance, we have to have the word inside of us. We have to be able that the Holy Spirit, when it slips our memory, because our memory can become short term or long term. Our memory sometimes is cumbered with so many different things. And so some of the things that we ought to remember, it will slip us. Life is so busy today that if you're not writing things down and if you're not careful, even your schedule gets messed up. All right, then. That's true. And so the writing or the written schedule helps our memory. Sometimes it's an electronic schedule because we put it on a Google calendar mm. and it helps our memories. 
And so because our memories are not long-term or sustainable, sometimes it is a Holy Spirit that when the word is inside of you, yeah, yeah. that you can speak it over yourself and yeah, say, be yeah. healed, be delivered. You can speak it over yourself and say, Paul, you will stand. Having done all to stand, still stand. You can speak it over yourself and say, you will not be able to be tricked up by the wives of the devil. Yes. Amen. It is the Holy Spirit who brings a word back to our memory. As a matter of fact, there is a particular scripture where Jesus told the disciples that when you go before magistrates, the Holy Spirit will tell you exactly how to respond. I can tell you this as a testimony. There are times when I'm in conversations and I'm telling them the answer that comes out, the response that I gave to the person. Sometimes a conversation where it becomes a little confrontational or combative. And because I would have said something wrong, mother, the Holy Spirit bridled my tongue. So I said the right thing. And they were surprised at my response. Sometimes he zips it. So I'm silent. And there are times when you get to an interview or you get before someone who's talking to you and you may not know how to respond or you don't know what to say to that question because it hits you out of left field. But the Holy Spirit, your mouth opens and you respond in a way that even after that you're baffled that I said what I said. It is a Holy Spirit that does that. And Jesus said it. He said he will give you what to say at the right time. He's not here just to teach you how to walk. He's not here just to counsel you. That's a big part of his job. But he's here to lead you. That's why he came. It's not just because of the birth of the early church on the day of Pentecost. Because two things happened on that day. I want you to hear me well as we close. Two things happened. The first thing that happened was that the Holy Spirit came and he empowered us. The first thing that happened was that the Holy Spirit came and he showed who he is. That was his great announcement. That was his proclamation. Oh, but it also was that he came and that became the birth of the early church as we know it as it is now. Before the church, my God, I got to teach that one day. Because before the church, we only heard about synagogues. We only heard about going into the synagogues or the temple. There was no mention of church before the book of Acts. If you search the Old Testament, if you find the word church in it, someone put a wrong translation or someone put a wrong word, but it was a synagogue. It was a temple. But when the Holy Spirit came, the Bible says that neither Jew nor Greek, neither barbarian nor centaur, it says neither black nor white, it says neither high nor low, but when the Holy Spirit came, he came to cover everybody. He came so that the young will be available, the old will be empowered. He came as Joel said in Joel chapter 2, that I'm going to pour out my spirit, not just upon some flesh, not just upon the Jews, not just upon a few Gentiles, not just upon your favorites, but I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and my old men shall dream dreams, of my young men, and the old men, they shall testify, the young women shall testify. The Holy Spirit, he came, so that you and I could lead better lives. He came so that he can show us what God desires for us. He came so that we can understand that God loves us beyond measure. He came, as Jesus said in Hebrews chapter 13, for I will never leave you nor forsake you. He came to fulfill what was stated in Matthew 28, the Great Commission 19 and 20. Witness. For lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. He came so that he can be with us to witness That's the word. to those who are going forward. Amen. 
He came that when Jesus said in Matthew 9, 28, 19, to go. Yes. That you're not going alone. Amen. But he's with you. With you. Amen. He came with so that you. when people have hated you, yeah. you can still love them. Amen. He came yeah. so that when people have hurt you, yeah. you can still forgive them. Yeah. He came so that when you feel like you don't have the confidence yeah. to do the thing that God has called you to do, he said he has not called many who are wise, but he has called the simpletons of this world. He has called the foolish things to confound the wise of this world. Amen. That's why he came. He came so that when you're not in a congregation like this, and you're in the secret place of your own home, or sitting on your back porch, or in your car crying your eyes out, and you don't have someone to hug on you, oh or you don't have someone to give you a towel or a, a handkerchief to dry those tears uh -huh. because of life circumstances and yes. situations, yes. then you can feel his presence around you. Amen. The warmth yes. of his comfort. Yes. I'm the witness. That's why he came. He came that when you're lying in the hospital bed all by yourself, looking forward to going into surgery, or looking to go into surgery, not looking forward to it, and you don't know how you're going to come out on the other side, that he whispers sweet peace to you, that I'm here if you'll just trust me. Peace. He came so that we may know how to live one with another. Amen. We don't have to judge each other. We can accept people as they are and respect them without compromising who we are as born again believers. He came so that when I'm standing on the edge to jump that the devil is whispering in my ear that my life is not worth it anymore. That when the enemy is saying that if you are gone everybody will be better. The life of the pit of hell. He came to give me that confidence that God made me special. As Psalm 139 says that I am fearfully and wonderfully made to remind me that I'm special. That I'm worth it. That I'm worthwhile. That I'm valuable. That's why he came. And he came Not only just to teach us, Amen. to counsel us, to love us, to guide us, to quicken us, Very to make nice. us alive in Christ. Nice. But he came to guide us. Amen. So when that trumpet sounds, he will accompany us. Because the Bible tells us what a day. What a day. in the book of Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 2, it tells us that he is the church is what's holding back the Holy Spirit right here, right now. The church, the Bible tells us that when the church is gone, he that let it, when he, when he has already left, when the church is gone, everything on this earth is going to be open. You think Target celebrating Gay Pride Month and everything, the baby clothes, and tell you that you, you, the devil loves pronouns and so on, and celebrate. You think this is nothing that we're facing yet? The only reason why the enemy is not let loose on us uh -huh. yes. is because the Holy Ghost is here. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Guide us. And to guide us because God wants us to get safely home. But when the church is taken away, when the church is gone, we call it the rapture, the calling up of the saints. When it's gone, all hell will break loose. And that's why the Holy Spirit is here. He's saying to us today that he's here to comfort you. He's here to strengthen you. He's here to teach you how to forgive. He's here to carry you through persecution and trials. He's here with you. That's very nice. That 
when you speak to the man on the corner or the woman in the neighborhood and they neglect you, that it's not you that they're neglecting. It's God that they're neglecting. But he's also there with you that when you go speak to them, you don't have to use your words. But when you use your testimony, when you use the gospel, then he works on that to convict them of sin and draw them in. He's here today. And whether you're young, old, middle-aged, he is no respect of persons. He came for you. And he wants to draw you to the kingdom. Jesus said, I must go. So the comforter will come. Spirit of truth. For when the comfort is come, whom I will send unto you, from the Father. You see how they intertwine? I am going to send him, Jesus said, from the Father. From the Father. And he will come to you. He said, even the spirit of truth which proceeded from the Father, he will testify of me. As we stand, the Holy Spirit is not a thing. No. He's not an it. He is not a figment of our imagination. But he is a third person of the Trinity. And as the Bible says, he has a purpose. And he came with a purpose so that you and I can live and you and I can communicate effectively with the Father to carry out our God-given destiny. If you're here in the house today, you may not understand what we're talking about. You may not understand... Uh, who this Holy Spirit is and, you know, what is it that we have that you don't have? If you're online today and you're watching us, wherever you are today, the Holy Spirit is not restricted just to this edifice at 35 Garden Street. He's not just restricted to our homes or to us individually. But he is like the wind. He bloweth where he listed. He's everywhere and anywhere. He's in the prison cell right now. He's in the yard, in the prison with those prisoners, the, the vilest of sinners. Speaking to them to let them know that there is hope. He's in every church on this Sunday morning That's right. and this Sunday afternoon. He's in every home. And he doesn't want to dwell in a physical edifice. He wants to dwell in this temple, which is our bodies. And he's saying, if you're here today, and you don't know the Lord as your Savior, if you need prayer, the altar is open. If you're online today and you need prayer, we want to pray for you. We want to pray with you because the Holy Spirit loves you just as how he loves us. Amen. Hallelujah. Is there one today that will say, pray for me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, the altar is not a place of shame. You know, the devil has, has this thing before we pray. The devil has this thing where he doesn't want us to come up because people are going to look at us. I want to say this publicly to us today. All of us, all, and I'm not saying all of you, all of us mm -hmm. has faults. All of us has weaknesses. All of us is not perfect. Wow. All of us needs him. All of us including myself, needs him every day, every hour. And so the altar is not a place of shame, but it's a place of deliverance. It's a place of victory. And when you step out, you're saying to the enemy, I'm not staying back here with you anymore. That's right. I'm moving forward in Christ. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we come before you this afternoon and we bless your name. God, as we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit, there are so many things and everything in our lives we can't do. Jesus, you declared in John chapter 15, the first a few verses, the first five verses, you said you are the divine, the true vine, and your father God is a husband man. And we are the branches and God the same way that we have to depend on your son Jesus Christ the disciples is the same way that we today have to depend on the Holy Spirit because without him we can't do anything without him we are powerless 
Without him, we are just trying to push in our own strength. Without him, we are trying to do it on our own. But today, God, as we come to surrender ourselves before you, today, Father God, we fall on our faces. We bow our hearts in your presence. And God, we are saying, have your way. Spirit of the living God, heal in the house today. Spirit of the living God, we ask you to touch today. We ask you to baptize. We ask for a fresh infilling God in the name of Jesus. Even for those of us who have been already been baptized. Oh God, we don't want it to be a one-time experience, but God, we're asking you to daily let rivers of living water overflow us. Let the Holy Spirit saturate our being in the name of Jesus. And God, today, Holy Spirit, you are a healer, and we speak to every pain, we speak to every discomfort, we speak to every evil thought that the Holy, that the, that the enemy is trying to put in our hearts and our minds, and we thank you today, God, that you are able to deliver. We thank you, and Holy Ghost, that you are able to destroy the yoke that the enemy has tried to put on us. We thank you, God, today. We ask that you will rekindle the fire in us today, God. Some of us, our flames have come down to a flicker, barely flicking like a candle in the wind. And God, today we ask, Holy Ghost, that you who is a fire that purifies, that you will blaze in us, that you will burn inside of us, that you will ignite us one more time. Hallelujah, God, that we will be sustainable in this flame by your power, that you will fuel us, that we will have passion for your work, we'll have passion for your word, we'll have passion for burnt souls, our hearts will break for what break yours, God. Today, Holy Spirit, we submit ourselves to you. And as we depart from this edifice, we do not depart from your presence because you're always with us. But I pray, hallelujah, I pray for strength in our bodies today. I pray for deliverance in our bodies today. I pray for healing and breakthrough in our bodies today, God. And that you would have your way. Fall on us in this house. Fall on us in this place, God. Lord, as we put, turn our hearts to you, God, as we open ourselves before you, God, have your way in our midst and do your wonderful work in the name of Jesus. Bless, oh God, and cover right now and touch, hallelujah, God, Amen. and let your will be done in Jesus' name. We pray for those who don't know you as Lord and Savior. And God, as you draw them to you today, that God, that they will recognize that you died on the cross for them. You love them, Father, and that you are willing, God, to call every prodigal home. Hallelujah today. You are open with open arms, waiting for them to come. And God, everyone who doesn't know you in the part of their sins, that God, you have a place for them. There is room at the cross for them. The millions have come. There is still room for one. There is room at the cross for them today. We give you praise and honor, and we give you glory Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Can we praise him today? Thank you, Lord. Lord, you're worthy, God. We bless you, and we honor you today, Father. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is a person. He is here to cover us. He's here to keep us. He is here to bless us. He is here to lead us into what God has called us to do. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want you to remember that this week we will not be meeting here at 35 Garden Street for any service at all. We will not be here on Wednesday. We will not be here on Friday. So our youth night and our prayer meeting is canceled. We'll still have our fasting Fridays. Uh, we'll still be in fasting, but we are going to support the, our state convention. It happens once per year, and we are looking forward to going to support it. Thursday night at 7 p.m. It's an abundant life in Freehold. If you need a ride, please uh, let us know or call the church number. Let us know. 
on Friday night is going to be in, up in Trenton, New Jersey at the First Haitian Church of God on Greenwood Avenue. And on Sunday evening, it's going to be at the War Memorial. That's when we close out the convention. I also want to say our very own Pastor Loma, she got her ordination um, graduation at the Cleveland, Tennessee. We were there a few weeks back. And on the state level, they're going to have a graduation for all the ordained ministers and also for those who are ordained bishops and those who have a license. Or on Thursday night, they're going to, it's a two-part graduation. On Thursday night, they are going to honor her as well as those who have participated in the ministerial internship program and those who have done licensure and those who are uh, ordained, who have gone through the process. But on Sunday evening, if you can't make it on Thursday night for any reason to support her, and if it was anyone in this house, we want we want to know what's going on in your life so we can come out and support as not just here at church, but also to come and celebrate with you. Romans chapter 12, verse 15 says we should rejoice with those who rejoice, and we should weep and mourn with those who weep and mourn. That's right. And so in any situation you're going through, please let us know so we can be there because that's what God called us to do. So on Sunday evening at 6 p.m. at the War Memorial, if you can make it, we'd love for you to make it. We'd love for you to come. If, if, if it's a ride, then let us know. But at 6 p.m. on Sunday evening, please let us know. We can make some arrangements. If we got to get a bus, we'll get a bus, something. And if you're coming, then we'll all right up to the war memorial we'll enjoy the service and we'll celebrate our first lady pastor Roma, and celebrate uh, here's how i see it let me use my house as an example in the taylor's family if we have a win for one person it's a win for all of us Amen. if we have a loss for one person it's a loss for all of us mm -hmm. in ebenezer Amen. If there's a win for one individual or someone in your family, it's a win for all of us. Right. If it's a loss in your family, mm -hmm. it's a loss for all of us. So we want to be here to support you. We're here and we want to be there to support you. Not just in word or in tongue, but as the Bible says, in deed and in truth. Amen? Amen. And so we're inviting you to come on Sunday evening. If you can't make it on Thursday, Freehold is an hour away from here. Trenton is about 35 minutes, so it's closer. It, in Trenton, it starts at 6. The days are longer, so by 8.30 or so, we'll be done. We can get home. Amen? Amen. So if you need a ride, please let us know. Call the church number. We will not be here this week, so we won't see you on Wednesday. We won't see you on Friday. Amen? Amen. And let us go. Let's rejoice with our dear pastor. We rejoice with our sister and rejoice as Ebenezer all together. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Just stand with me as we close. The book of Jude chapter has one chapter, verse 24 says, And now unto him who can keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen, amen and amen. And I want to also make this publicly before we go. If there's any of us who are graduating in this house, I know it's graduation season, or if you have something that's going on, let us know. We'll take the time off from work to come to support you. We'll take that time off to come. You are important. You're that important. You're that valuable. You're that worthy. We will do that. God bless you. Have a blessed week. It's going to be a busy week, but it's going to be worthwhile. Stay in the presence of the Lord. And remember the Holy Spirit, He's got you. He has got you. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you for watching our service. If this is your first time connecting with us, please take a moment to subscribe to this YouTube channel and also to follow us on Facebook. We hope that you were blessed by today's message. If at the end of today's viewing, you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, we would love to connect with you by having you email us at ebenezerfwccog at gmail.com. We are located at 35 Garden Street in Mount Holly, New Jersey, 08060. Or you may call us at 
283-683-6798. If no one is available to take your call, please leave a voice message and someone will return your call. If you would like to be a blessing to this ministry, you may donate through Cash App at dollar sign Ebenezer FWC COG or you may write a check to Ebenezer Family Worship Center COG and mail it to 90 Beechnut Court, Lumberton, New Jersey 08048. We invite you to join us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for refresh and refocus Bible studies and prayer. Join us here in person or via phone line toll free at 669 275 1668. God bless you.